I keep my knife clean. This log is soaked with duck oil. This is going to be awesome. I mean, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful roast duck breast over a fire with oak, maple, and a hint of blueberry. I got my garlic toast using coconut oil and duck fat. And of course, I've got my mashed potatoes to soak up everything. I am ready to eat. Look at that beautiful caramelized duck breast. This flying insect has become ensnared by the surface film of the water here. And unfortunately, its repeated struggles are not gonna help it. All they really do is cause these rapid fire concentric rings. So these flowers here are actually um, off limits to people picking them. In fact, some states, especially New England, they are considered endangered. And one of the reasons why these are so off limits for people picking them is they do not rejuvenate or replenish their populations. Once you pick one, it's gone for good. And less than 5% of them actually survive transplanting them, which means that, well, less than 5% of them survive if you try to take one home. So it's not actually humans that Put their population at risk. It's actually deer who bring their numbers down. See, deer like to eat their flowers. And as I said, you, you take this flower, it does not come back. So they're more successful in deer-free areas. If you have an area with a lot of deer, chances are you're not going to have many lady slippers. If I was any closer, they'd all peel off, uh, kind of like a bunch of sailors abandoning a burning ship or something. coming out here all the time and just, you know, I really wish I never lost my canoe. I love spots like this. Beautiful scenery, listening to a bunch of birds in the background and watching the breeze dance lightly across the surface of this water. Kind of like organic television in a way. It does the same thing for me as a campfire. Once I look at it, I just can't tear myself away. Kind of like a good thunderstorm or a good snowfall. Like I said, I just can't tear my eyes from it.
Okay, so check this out. I was just in a place I like to call the Silent Plains for obvious reasons. And while I was there, there's this board that I know about that I check under, you know, frequently. And nothing except for a spider, some citronella ants, and what I thought was a ground skink. But it took off. I wasn't sure. Anyhow, so I go to this other spot really close by that I frequent every single time I'm out here. And believe it or not, I find two ground skinks and to top it off, this super cute neonate worm snake. Have a look at this. The thing is adorable. Now I've seen individuals that are around nine or 10 inches long. This one is only three or four inches. Another characteristic that I've noticed with this species is the fact that they're they usually use their nose and try to dig in between their fingers or even the, the, the treads in the palm of your hand. They just keep pushing, hoping to dig down because they are a fossorial species. I'm in love with the species of snake and it's, it seems to be very mild mannered. Not only do worm snakes look exactly like worms, but they've got this little almost barb type tip on their tail. It's like a hardened scale that I guess they might use for digging or something. I'm not really sure. Take a look at his little pink underside. His pink belly. Can't see that. That's one of the reasons it's got the name Worm Snake. I know I always film antlions when I'm out here, but what a crazy looking insect. So all I can say is, wow, this spot is amazing. It's just beautiful. Look at all this. Going to sleep. Okay, so I cut this cloth into squares or rectangles, and then I'm gonna place it onto this folded piece of foil. I don't do any more than that. That's the max I will do on uh, one of these. And I gotta fold it up just to see where it comes. Okay. Fold that real good. And then I take uh, something and I poke a little hole in one side. Nice little hole right there, okay? So I fold this up, being sure to really seal up those edges, those seams, so that no air can escape or enter this little foil packet. And I gotta squeeze out all the extra air that's in here. Squeeze it out real good. And then I simply place this in the fire. Uh, well, on the coals. And uh, I did a bunch of these last night. I'm basically making char cloth. So I have my little packet of cloth sitting on the coals of this fire. And as you can see, there's a lot of smoke shooting out of the hole. It's not actually combusting in the flames because there's no oxygen supply. It's just turning into pretty much carbon. The reason I do that is because, you know, charred wood, 
char cloth take a spark really well. So I decided to head towards the Silent Plains and get a few photographs of the stars. The stars out here are incredible. I got Leo, Ursa Major, and basically a lot of stars. But of course, I couldn't help looking under some rocks and logs on my way back. To my pleasant surprise, I found this four-toed salamander. These salamanders are pretty easy to identify because, well obviously, they've got four toes on all four feet, but a more obvious characteristic is a constriction at the base of the tail. That's where the tail would pretty much break off if a predator grabs this animal. And for me, the third characteristic is this bright off-white belly with some very distinct black spots all over it. I'm so glad the salamander's still here. Gives me a chance to, to show off the belly I was talking about. See all those spots? And in the sunlight here, I can see that it's a lot more red than I realized. It's actually really cool looking. Glad it's still here. So I finally found some sweet fern. I've been looking for this stuff for several years now. I know other areas where it grows really abundantly, but I haven't been to those areas for a few years. I've been coming here a lot. This is the first time I found this here. There's a bunch of it. Sweet fern makes a great tea. It's got medicinal properties. I'll, I'll list them. Um, as a hot tea, it tastes rather tonic, um, almost astringent. And as a sun tea or cold tea, it's incredible. It tastes so much like English tea. It smells incredible. It's got this like sweet, sticky, almost ambergris scent to it. Um, it's not a fern whatsoever. And this isn't marijuana, so don't go saying anything. But uh, finally, I'm in love with this plant. I'm so happy to finally find some. Uh, good trip. Uh, last night I found that four-toed salamander. I'm excited about that. Found a sweet fern over there. I'm really excited about that and a fat wood, which is great for fire making. I made some char cloth last night and uh, other stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had a great week. Last night was real cold, coldest night of my trip, and today's the warmest day of my trip. Go figure. But I gotta go home now because I just remembered there's a few things I gotta do that are important. So I have to cut the day short. So thanks a lot for watching. Uh, once again, I'm Chris Ignato. And where am I going? I'm going home. <laughs>